Okay, so here we go. We're back with part two. This is the second side of the notes. And now, let's take what we've just been doing and apply that to finding the actual shaded area of a figure. Okay, so not just the fraction being shaded, but what's the actual area. Now, there's a little formula up here, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. It says, find the shaded area of each figure. All right, so let's see. we got part A here. Here's the picture. This is 135 degrees, and the radius is 8. So here's the thing. We can find the total area of the circle. Area of a circle is pi times radius squared, pi r squared. And the radius is 8. So pi times 8 squared, which is 64 pi. Now that's for the whole circle. We don't want the whole circle. We want a fraction of the circle. We want only this 135 degree section here. How do I find the fraction? Well, what I do is I take that number. This n here is for the central angle. I divide by 360. And then that's 135 divided by 360. Now we did this on the front. That's going to be 3 over 8. And so what we do then is we take that fraction and we're going to multiply that by the overall area. When you take a fraction of something, it means you multiply. So if I only want the shaded portion here, I take my fraction, 3 eighths, I multiply it by the area, which was pi times 8 squared, and what we get is 3 eighths times 64 pi. Now let's see, I can do 3 eighths times 64. 3 divided by 8 times 64 gives me 24. So my answer is 24 pi. And let's say that this was centimeters. So it would be centimeters squared. That's my shaded area. Okay, I'm going to say it's ASH, area shaded 24 pi centimeters squared. You could also write that as 24 times pi, and that's 75.4 as a decimal. So we could say equals 75.4, and there's our answer for part A. So all you do is you take the fraction of the circle being shaded, which is 3 eighths. That's our fraction. Say frac. Multiply that by the total area, and what you get is the shaded area. That's the portion that you want. All right, so let's put all this together here in part B. So we're going to take the central angle, which is 120. Area shaded, SH, equals 120 over 360. That's the fraction times the whole area of the circle, which is pi times 12 squared. Okay, so we can reduce this. This is one-third times 12 squared is 144 pi. Now, one-third times 144 is going to be 48 pi. Now, this is a good answer. This is your area shaded. That's the exact solution. Or what we could do, 48 pi is 150.8. So equals 150.8. Both of these are good answers right here. Take the fraction of the circle times the whole area, and what it gives you is the portion that's shaded. Okay? Let's try part C. Now this time C, the central angle here is 150, but the part that we're looking at is whatever's left over. You know that all the central angles add up to 360, so I can do 360 minus 150. That gives us 210, so the central angle measures 210 degrees. All right, so here we go, part C. We're going to take area shaded. You take the central angle over 360. That's the fraction being shaded times the area is pi times radius squared, pi times radius squared. 
Okay, so it's the fraction of the circle times the area of the whole thing. And if we reduce this, we're going to end up with 7 twelfths times 100 pi. Now this time, I don't think it's going to be as nice a number if we have it exact, 7 twelfths times 100. Let's see what happens here. So 7 divided by 12. I didn't put it, my fraction in parentheses, the last time. I don't have to do this, but normally I do. 7 twelfths times 100. Well, 58.33 repeating, which is a fraction. So 175 thirds times pi. So my area shaded is 175 over 3 times pi. To be honest, that's not the way I want to write it. Let me get the decimal. So I'll take 175 divided by 3 times pi, which gives me 183.3. 183.3. So we have 183.3. That's the shaded area. Okay, so what's the concept? Take the fraction, figure out the fraction of the whole circle that's being shaded, multiply it by the area of the circle. And what you get is the shaded area. Okay, now, the same kind of reasoning, let's talk about the arc length. Arc length is circumference. Arc length is going to be the exact same concept. The only difference is that we take the fraction of the circumference. If you want to find the distance around something, a circle, you're talking circumference. So that's going to be 2 pi times radius. And then we take the fraction that we're actually looking at, not the whole thing. Okay, so in this case, we want the length of AB. Calculate the length of arc. We want arc AB in each circle. So here's the arc. Now the central angle is 135. So the fraction being shaded is going to reduce to 3 eighths. Now the total circumference is 2 pi times 8. 2 pi times r, radius is 8, that's 16 pi. Now that would be the total distance around the circle. I don't want the total distance, I only want 3 eighths of the distance. So what I do, okay, so arc AB is 3 over 8 times 16 pi. And what that gives us, uh, 3 eighths times 16 is going to be 6. We get 6 pi. Now as a decimal, 6 times pi is 18.8. So both of these would be good answers. That's your distance, your arc length. And for arc length, I'm just going to say arc AB. In the formula, okay, in the formula above here, it says S equals. In a lot of books, for arc length, you'll see the word S to represent the arc length. Okay, so part B, let's put all this together here. What I did in part A was I kind of broke it into the two steps. I did the fraction. Then I did the circumference, and then I put it together. I multiplied it. Let's just do this in one shot. We want to find the length of arc AB. Well, take the fraction that's being looked at, 120 divided by 360, times the total circumference, which is 2 pi times 12. So we can reduce here. This is 1 third times 24 pi. 1 third times 24 is 8, so we get 8 pi. Now 8 pi is the exact arc length. We could also do 8 times pi, which is 25.1. Okay, so the length of arc AB is 8 pi or 25.1. And one thing I want to point out here, arc length is not the same as as the arc measure. Arc measure is 360 degrees all the way around. Arc length is an actual distance. That's why we do circumference. Okay, arc length is distance. Now the last one here, part C. Now we're going to find the length of the major arc right here. So we're not going to use 150. We're going to use 210, just like we did in the problem above. So the central angle measure 
divided by 360 times, that's the fraction, times the whole circumference, which is 2 pi times 10. Now the fraction was 7 over 12, and then 2 times 10, that's 20 pi. So if I do 7 twelfths times 20, let me do this, 7 divided by 12 times 20, 11.6 repeating, which is 35 over 3. So that's 35 pi over 3. Now as a decimal, I can just multiply this by pi. That's 36.7. 36.7. That's my arc length. And that is the end of part two. Okay, so go ahead and stop this and then we'll move on to part three.